Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanna go through or start going through some of the challenges from 100 days of SwiftUI. For those of you who don't know, Paul Hudson has created this entire 100 day program for learning SwiftUI. And in a number of those days, there are challenge sections. So if we look through here, you can see day one all the way to day 100, but we're gonna start going through the challenges on the projects. So I don't wanna start with the Swift specific challenges. We're gonna kind of skip ahead and go to the first challenge that was in an actual project. So in the very first project, part three, if you click on that, you can see you have the we split wrap up as well as review for project one. If we click on the wrap up, you can see, you can review what you've learned, and then there's these three challenges for ways that you can extend the functionality of the current app. So before we get started, big disclaimer, if you haven't gone through this, um, don't watch this video yet. Um, you're gonna just sell yourself short if you simply watch you know, me implement the solutions to the challenges versus trying to do it yourself. So highly recommend if you haven't done it yet, work through the challenges, kind of come up with your own solutions. And if you get stuck, or if you just wanna see how someone else implemented it, then come back to this video and watch. But let's go ahead and jump right in and get started with the very first challenge. So add a header to the third section saying amount per person. So let's switch over to Xcode. And you can see right away that I'm using the version from Paul Hudson, uh, just kind of give everybody the same starting point. So I downloaded this right from his download files on 100 Days of SwiftUI. So that first part, we're just gonna add a header. So for me, I didn't quite like the description, so I decided to kinda, you know, change it up a little bit. But we'll just add header, we'll use a text, and here we'll say total amount per person after tip. So pretty straightforward. You can see the preview updates. We now have the total amount per person after the tip. If we flip back over for the second challenge, add another section showing the total amount for the check, i.e. the original amount plus tip value without dividing by the number of people. So the what makes this part a little easier is we already have a lot of these values, right? We don't need to go through and recalculate everything, but we'll create another section. Um, I wanna have the total amount per person after the tip at the bottom. So I'll add the next section right here. So section, we'll do a header text. And here we'll say total amount after tip. Open it up, and here we'll have another text. And we haven't created this variable yet, but bear with me. So total amount with tip, and we'll give it a specifier. Of percent dot to F, and then we have to close that. And now we'll create our total amount with tip. So if we go up here, we already have our total per person, but we're gonna implement another computed property. So variable total amount with tip, be of type double, and we'll have let our tip selection equal double of the tip percentages tip percentage, let our order amount equals double check amount. And if you'll notice, this is very similar to what we have for total per person. So let tip value equals order amount by 100 times the tip selection let grand total equal order amount plus the tip value. And lastly, 
we're just going to return grand total. So we'll save that. Let's see if we can get our preview to rerun and start working. Have that running. So we say 100 people. Now we can see, you know, based on four people, the total amount after the tips, 120. And then if you split it four ways, 30. So zero, just to check, you can see 100. That is our total amount after the tip since we are giving a tip of zero, right? So that's the second challenge done. And if we flip back, change the number of people picker to be a text field, making sure to use the correct keyboard type. So if we flip back to Xcode, we can see the first thing I want to do is right now we're using number of people as a, um, an integer simply because we have it in a picker, but we're just going to flip this over to being a string. Now, immediately that's going to start breaking a few things. So first we're going to convert this to an integer. If that fails, we'll just use zero, but we'll have the particular number pad uh, so that we can prevent people from entering things that won't be integers. Um, so we get that. And then lastly, we're going to swap out the picker. So instead of having the picker number of people, we'll get rid of that and we'll just have text field. We'll say number of people. Text is the number of people. And we'll do keyboard type dot number pad. And that really should be it. Um, you should be able to resume and we'll run this again. Now we have in the preview, let's do $100 and number of people, we'll say two. So now we're splitting at 60. Um, if there's nothing there, it's keeping the last value. So three, we have 40 and we can say, for doing 10 people, it's $12 per person when it gets split. Um, but that's it. We went through and we implemented all three of those challenges. So if you liked the video, please be sure to leave it a like and consider subscribing so that you don't miss when I put out new videos. I tend to put out new videos every week. And if you want me to keep going through and solving these challenges, just let me know in the comments and I'm happy to do it. But thanks everybody, catch you in the next one.